Although the Earth is a large and stunning place, it is only a little speck when compared to the rest of the cosmos. People have had an unquenchable thirst for knowledge about the secrets of the universe ever since human technology made it feasible to launch rockets and satellites into orbit. We'll never stop looking for new things in space and the atmosphere. The Voyagers are sending us information to absorb and it recently turned around and warned us in a terrible way that everything is about to change. Join us as we explore the horrifying discovery made by Voyager 1 and what it might portend for the future of humanity. Chuck Berry, a legendary member of the rock and roll genre, attended one of the biggest summer parties in 1989. The event, hosted by NASA's Voyager project, was a celebration of two space probes that were about to cross the boundary of our solar system rather than a concert. The Voyager missions have played a crucial role in space exploration for almost 45 years, giving some of the very first and most important glimpses into the true status of our solar system. However, it was never planned for these missions to go this long. The notion to send out probes in the 1970s was created by pure accident when Michael Minovich observed that a spacecraft could piggyback on the velocity of a planet and launch further out into the solar system. This led to the first plans for the probe being carried out. The Voyager mission was originally intended to span five years, according to NASA officials. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are nonetheless still traveling and collecting important scientific data from the furthest reaches of space. The two spacecraft were launched weeks apart in the summer of 1977. The missions Voyager 1 and 2 were created to investigate Jupiter and Saturn. Studies of those planets were successfully completed by both missions. Later, in 1986 and 1989, Voyager 2 made the first ever up-close studies of Uranus and Neptune. The Voyager Grand Tour was the name given to the flybys of the four planets. The planet Earth, often known as Pale Blue Dot, is seen in the first family portrait of the solar system that Voyager 1 captured on February 14, 1990. Its cameras were quickly turned off to save power and computing resources for other devices. Instruments on Voyager 1 kept researching the solar system as it moved toward interstellar space. The heliopause, or the point at which the solar wind changes into the interstellar medium, was sought for by scientists from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory using plasma wave tests carried out on Voyager 1 and 2. The probe was traveling toward the Sun with a relative velocity of roughly 61,197 km per hour, 38,026 miles per hour, as of 2013. Voyager 1 is currently moving at a velocity of 523 million kilometers, 325 million miles per year, or roughly one light year every 18,000 years. According to researchers at the Applied Physics Laboratory of Johns Hopkins University, Voyager 1 experienced the termination shock in February 2003. At this time, the solar wind had slowed to subsonic speeds. On November 6, 2003, some other scientists voiced skepticism and explored this. Since Voyager 1's solar wind detector stopped working in 1990, the problem was not solved until additional data became available. Due to this failure, it was necessary to extrapolate termination shock detection from the data collected by the other devices on board. Amateur radio operators from AMSAT in Germany used the 20-meter, 66-foot dish at Bochum on March 31, 2006, to track and receive radio signals from Voyager 1. The data that was retrieved was compared to information from the Deep Space Network station in Madrid, Spain, and validated. It appears that this is the first amateur tracking of Voyager 1 to date. On December 13, 2010, the Low Energy Charge Particle Instrument revealed that Voyager 1 has passed the range of the radial outward flow of the solar wind. It is thought that interstellar wind pressing against the heliosphere at this distance causes the solar wind to turn sideways. Solar wind detection has constantly been at zero since June 2010, providing unmistakable proof of the occurrence. On December 5, 2011, NASA said that Voyager 1 has entered a brand new area known as Cosmic Purgatory. The solar system's magnetic field doubles in strength within this stagnation area, where charged particles pouring from the sun stall and turn inward under what appears to be pressure from interstellar space. While the detection of high-energy electrons coming from outside has increased 100-fold, energetic particles originating in the solar system have decreased by almost half. 
About 113 AU from the Sun, the stagnation region's inner boundary can be found. Voyager 1 had passed the line separating our solar system from interstellar space, according to a 2013 NASA announcement. Interstellar refers to space between stars. The beginning of interstellar space is where the Sun's magnetic field and continuous flow of particles end. Voyager 2 eventually travelled into interstellar space in 2018. The two explorers studied the interactions between the solar wind, the Sun's continuous stream of charged particles, and the interstellar medium. The heliosphere, a protective bubble that encircles our solar system, has also received information from them. The heliosphere is created by the solar wind and is shaped and altered by interstellar conditions. The heliopause is the true boundary of the solar system, the point at which the solar wind ceases and interstellar space begins. NASA claims that the Voyager spacecraft has provided new information on interstellar space. For instance, they found that cosmic rays are roughly three times more intense outside of the heliopause than they are inside the heliosphere. To get a more comprehensive understanding of our solar and how the heliosphere interacts with interstellar space, scientists combine the discoveries from Voyager with information from later missions. Scientists reported that Voyager 1 had captured a humming sound that was connected to waves detected in minute quantities of gas discovered in the almost empty interstellar space. The Voyager missions during the past four decades have provided substantial knowledge on the Sun and the Sun's influence on the solar system, according to Nicola Fox, the director of NASA's Heliophysics Division in Washington, D.C. Experts continue to be perplexed as to how Voyagers can function even in temperatures much below those for which they were designed. Researchers have also found evidence of strange activity outside the solar system. The heliopause, which separates the heliosphere from the interstellar medium, seems to be rippling and producing unexpectedly obtuse angles. It is not a novel idea that the heliopause can alter the shape. Researchers have discovered that it is not static over the last 10 years. They made this discovery by combining information from NASA's Interstellar Boundary Explorer, IBEX satellite, which studies the emissions of energetic neutral atoms, ENAs, produced when solar winds and the interstellar medium interact, with information from the only two spacecraft to have ever left the heliosphere, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. The only direct in-situ measurements of the positions of these limits are made by the Voyager spacecraft, but only at a single point in space and time. The information has been utilized by scientists to create models that predict future changes to the heliopause. In a nutshell, solar winds and the interstellar medium exert forces on one another to establish a border that is continually moving. Recent heliopause research, however, has produced data that deviates from earlier conclusions. IBEX observed the brightening of ENAs that showed heliopause asymmetries over a period of several months in 2014 and the researchers later discovered that these asymmetries were inconsistent with the model's predictions. Furthermore, after analyzing data from Voyager 1 and 2, researchers found that the heliopause changed significantly in a relatively short period of time. That explains why there was such a large lag between the 2012 and 2018 entrance of the two spacecraft into interstellar space, respectively. The heliopause movement, however, defies the ideas as well. These differences were referred to by the researchers as entry-speaking and as possibly contentious. They want to keep studying the heliopause in anticipation of learning more from NASA's Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe, IMAP, an upgraded spacecraft that will launch in 2025 and be able to detect ENAs. We can only make conjectures about this peculiar event occurring up until that point in the eerie depths of the solar system, claims Zernstein. The Voyager 1 onboard system known as the Attitude Articulation and Control System, AACS, which is in charge of maintaining the spacecraft's high-gain antenna pointed at Earth, began sending home confusing jumbles of data in the middle of May last year, instead of the usual updates on the health and status of the spacecraft. From our vantage point, it appeared that the spaceship had acquired a condition resembling electronic aphasia, which affects a person's capacity for fluent speech. The data might not reflect any plausible condition at all, or they might have been generated at random. Even more puzzling for the engineers, according to a NASA statement at the time, was the fact that Voyager 1 appeared to be in fine shape despite the odd status reports from the spacecraft. The ship's radio signal is still strong and reliable, 
proving that the antenna is still pointed at Earth and is not, as the AACS asserted, in a different configuration. Similar to how the AACS was behaving strangely, the science systems on Voyager 1 continued to collect and transmit data as usual to NASA. The fault prevention mechanism, which is intended to put the spaceship into safe mode if there is a problem, was not activated by whatever was wrong with the AACS either. Fortunately, NASA experts found the issue and were able to put a fix in place. It was found that the AACS had started transmitting its telemetry data via an onboard computer that had long since stopped working. Because the dead computer corrupted all of the outgoing data, all NASA engineers had to do was instruct the AACS to use the proper computer to send its data home. Finding out what caused the AACS to switch systems in the first place will be a difficult task. The system likely received a bad command from another onboard computer, according to NASA. While they assert that there is now no grave concern for Voyager 1's well-being, the root cause must be identified and fixed to stop more strangeness. Beyond the magnetic field of our Sun, Voyager 1 has been drifting in interstellar space for the past 10 years. In the same way that Earth's magnetic fields protect us from high-energy particles and radiation from the Sun, the field protects the craft from cosmic rays and other interstellar radiation. It's reasonable to suppose that the onboard computers of Voyager 1 will also be concerned about memory errors that can accumulate over time when one of those high-speed energetic particles contacts a computer chip. At this point in the Voyager mission, a riddle like this is sort of expected, according to Susan Dodd, project manager for Voyager 1 and 2. Both spacecraft are around 45 years old, which is far older than what was anticipated under the mission plan. Additionally, we are in interstellar space, which is a very radioactive environment that has never been traveled through by a spaceship before. These spacecraft have already traveled through some amazing terrain. The Voyager mission was pushed to the boundary of the solar system with simple hardware and software from the 1970s, but how long can it last? Many scientists predicted that the spacecraft would eventually lose power. Surprisingly though, the two continued to accelerate past the heliopause and into interstellar space, where they have been roving for more than three decades. It is anticipated that both voyagers will continue to transmit data to Earth until 2025, or until their plutonium batteries can no longer support essential operations. But even if they break off communication, it's improbable that they will collide with anything or perish in the vastness of space. The Voyagers may instead embark on the most remarkable expedition of humankind, an immortal journey through the Milky Way, both individually and collectively. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.